Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. Uh, you are here, Andrew. <laughs> this is the Window Cleaning Podcast. What's going on, guys and gals? Um, if this is your first time checking it out, uh, this is going to be available via SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play, all that. Um, most of you listen on iTunes and Google Play and all the podcast things. It's awesome. If you're listening right now, I hope you're making a million bucks. Um, if you want to watch this, it's also available on YouTube. That's where we do all of our commenting, kind of back and forth. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to give us a thumbs up. I know it sounds so cliche, but on our end, it helps immensely. So do that now if you want. Um, if you are one of the elite, someone who watches or listens to everything, and you order your supplies through me, because you're awesome, thank you for everything. Uh, it is really because of you guys that uh, I get to um, uh, use the fancy, fancy toothpaste from the store with the little crystals in it. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Um, if you want to order your supplies for me, literally, that is uh, the best thing you can do for me. I truly appreciate it. My number direct, 862-312-2026. Uh, 862 862-312-2026 is my number that is my cell so text it um tell me it's in your cart whatever uh you know i'm a rep for window cleaning resource the greatest resource for window cleaners in the world um so a couple of quick shout outs that i want to do this week is of course jay murphy uh, and his lovely bride, uh, Mike Rhodes, what's going on, man? And of course, Mr. Bobby Walker, Journey of an Entrepreneur uh, podcast. He, if you haven't checked his podcast out and you want another podcast to listen to, check it out. It's awesome. He's a super good dude. Uh, it's called Journey of an Entrepreneur. Uh, all the platforms to iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, blah, blah, blah. And uh, Jake Dennis, man, what's going on? Um, so. Those are the shout-outs for this week. Um, the winner this week for our giveaway. We do it every single week. Um, we give away a swag bag and a sticker pack and the Ettore pin and all that is the one and the only Fluff Daddy. He won this week. Um, that's just a random thing we use. Uh, we pick people. So if you want to win, all you got to do is comment on YouTube. Anything from I Like Turtles to talking about the show. Uh, I genuinely appreciate it, guys. Um, even if you text me um, and just say, hey, love the podcast, it means a lot. So I appreciate it. Um, congrats, Fluff. Uh, shoot me your info and we'll get you out a, uh, you know, the goodie pack. Uh, we don't have many left. Actually, a uh, little bit of an intro before everything. I was just in New York um, and uh, I was going through, literally got in like this morning. Uh, but uh, going through everything, we have like 14 packs left. So we only have 14 more episodes of the giveaway of the swag bag. It'll be something new by then, but uh, as of right now, it is. So, um, Yeah, all you need to do to win, comment down below. Awesome. Cool. So um, this week, we are talking about growth. We are talking about the pros and the cons and i love talking about growth because everybody most everybody if you're to a point in your business where you pinnacle you go, i don't want to do anymore that's awesome work on how healthy of a company you are right work on how amazing your jobs that you do do dropping the ones that are crap getting some more better priced ones and just cherry picking to be happy as you can but if you're looking for growth then this is a hot topic. A lot of people are when they get in business, if you're new or you've been around for a while or anything, a lot of people are just like, I want to get a little bit bigger. I want to get to that sweet spot. I want to get to that saturation point. I just want to grow. And growth is an interesting, interesting beast. Now, if you've read anything on Christopher Lamborghinis, uh, he uh, started all kind of window cleaning. He wrote a book called The Marketing uh, Window Cleaner's Marketing Blueprint which will be available via podcast or uh, audiobook uh, relatively soon this fall. So, um, And if you listen to any of Josh Latimer's stuff, um, 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 Brian Vaughn talks about it a little bit too. These are guys that grew super quick. And this is awesome when you can grow super quick, except for there are cons 
from growth. You have to do it right. The thing with growth is you have to have the infrastructure uh, to kind of support it. And that is nothing more evident than where I live now. Uh, this town is awesome. But it was a small town and everybody decided to come here. And um, yeah, it got really big really quick, which is cool, right? Growth is cool. Growth is good. Except for the infrastructure isn't here. The roads are small. They're still like farm roads. We got lots of people. Um, intersections don't work. They're you know the the way that they're supposed to. There's traffic, right? There's a lot of that, and they just keep building subdivisions. Which again, growth is great. Fast growing cities are very popular cities. It's popular for a reason. I get that. But when you don't build everything else to accept the growth in a city or in your business. That's where the problem comes in. And it's true because I've seen it and I've had it actually happen to me where we had a burst of growth that was amazing and it sucked at the same time. Um, we we just took it kind of off the cuff and didn't really realize what was going on until afterwards. So that's why we're talking about it kind of today. And those guys that I mentioned before that did grow, they did it a lot of different ways. So this isn't the episode that you're going to come in and be like, what'd they do? What's the secret weapon? There is no secret weapon. Just read everything. Read the marketing blueprint. Um, listen to Josh Latimer. Listen to this podcast. You know, hustle. What you put in, you put out. That's literally the uh, the answer to, to growth. That's what you're here for. But the actual side of growth is different. Now, these guys, when they grew... If you grow so fast, you have to have everything ready to grow. That's the best case scenario. So a lot of guys out there you see that have backup equipment. They have maybe an extra truck or they have an extra pressure washer or they have any of that stuff. Uh, Maybe they have staff that they have guys that are only running 30 hours a week or 25 hours a week. If you're keeping them happy, that's awesome. But those guys are laying the footprint, the groundwork for growth. If you don't have that, you're going to be just like the city I live in, and you are just going to have a lot of traffic. You're going to have a lot of issues and a lot of downsides to growth because you never want to stop growth. If you stop growth, it's very hard to get that momentum back from growth, right? So like if you just decided, hey, I'm not ready, I can't grow right now, I just uh, and you stopped it, it would take you twice as long to get it back up to this point to kind of go. So growth is awesome, but you got to just build the structure for it. What are you talking about? We're, we don't have roads in our business. Well, what I'm talking about is those employees. Having an employee that can accept a little bit more. Having good employees, which is the biggest crapshoot in our industry, is employees. It's just so hard for guys and girls to get employees. If you're if you're blessed with like a bunch of really good employees, you need to understand how lucky you are. Keep them happy, do everything in your power because employees are the hardest part. But if you have those employees, they're looking for extra hours, they're looking for more work, you have that growth. Now if you got guys you're at 40 hours a week but you're still growing, guess what? You're gonna piss your guys off. They're gonna be working too much, they're going to not be happy. They're going to start doing crappy work. You're going to start getting bad reviews, and it's just going to be this crap shoot back to you, and it's going to destroy what you've been building for. Um, but you can't stop growth. So what do you do is you have to see growth is happening, and you have to find the sweet spot for where growth is necessary. Now, there's a few things in growth that people don't quite think about. One of them is having the capital to grow. No, not like the money to be able to send postcards but you need to have the money to buy the stuff that allows the infrastructure to allow growth which is hiring employees right hiring employees is expensive if you're offering benefits and everything else employees are expensive the hiring process can be expensive maybe you're going through you know uh, monster or um, you know all those other ones that uh, you know may work for you training is expensive now you got somebody just standing around watching and you're paying them right? But what about having an extra truck? There's a payment if you're buying. There's uh, insurance if you're buying outright or you're lending on it, right? There's fuel. There's plating. There's titling. There's all that to get that truck up and running, not to mention 
getting it set up with a ladder rack, getting that new employee all their own gear, getting maybe a water fed system for that truck, maybe getting toolboxes on that truck and getting it decked out and set up the same way and getting it lettered or wrapped. That's a big expense and you have to be able to float that before you have the growth. And that's a big thing where people kind of don't don't see that you have to prepare for it. Now, could you run an extra guy in another pickup truck that you already got? Well, sure. Sure, you can shove them in there like sardines. Now you got three on a job site, which we know is less efficient than two. And if you disagree, comment on YouTube. But it is, right? On um, uh, residential, three is always going to be less uh, efficient than two. Um so now you're kind of lacking in that end. Now, you could make everybody kind of unhappy sending three people. Sure, you could get a little bit more work done during the day, but yet you don't have them doing their own route because you don't have all the infrastructure for it. That's It's all right to go that route if that's your only route, but if you're not planning for it, that's the only reason you have that. You're throwing extra guys. you still got to buy equipment for that guy. you still got to hire him. you still got to train him. you still got to go through all that. So maybe you don't have the truck expenses, but you got a lot of other expenses that maybe you just haven't thought of. Those all go in hand in hand with hiring somebody new. And if you grow too fast, and that is what you do, now what? what's the next step? Like when do you pull out and say, okay, well now three guys are doing 40 hours a week. I need to hire a fourth and pull the third off and do, is that what you're doing? Like where is your growth? When are you going to build for your growth? You know? And then if you have a truck sitting there, insured you have the equipment you have everything set there you spent a bunch of money because you could invest in your company like that and there's not the work for it guess what the most hustle i've ever had in business was after i bought a truck and went oh poop snacks like i have a truck and a bunch of payments and i have to get work for it because otherwise it's just sitting there like here here's what a little bit of a, a backstory I had a, I have a shop. It's 3,500 square feet, something like that. There's like uh, three offices and like a big office, second floor on the one side. And then the rest of it's all like uh, storage, inside storage for, we pull the trucks in. There's a wash bay. There's uh, pallet racking. There's all that, right? So every single day that I would walk in to get the guys ready, all the trucks line up in what we call the alley. It was like the main chute next to all the offices that was inside. And every time that truck would sit in front, truck number one would go, truck number two would go, truck number three would go, then there's that truck sitting there. It's like, ah, crap. You really want to upset yourself or motivate yourself, I guess? Think about what you're paying every day on a truck. Actually, do that anyway, and you'll be like, what? Knowing your costs is super important anyway. But if you look at it and go, whoa, it's costing me like, you know, a ton of money per day this thing's just sitting there that truck is losing me that much money you know that's a super big motivator to get off your butt and go sell some stuff so having that but not everybody's in that position where they can so maybe it's time to not push the growth as much make yourself a little bit more healthy before you push the growth you know not backing away from the growth letting the growth continue to come but maybe not doing as much advertising or doing this or doing that kind of pulling it back. I don't recommend that at all. I mean, build the infrastructure, keep that all set up and growth because you need to be relevant. Every single human in this country, we'll say, maybe not the world, but this country at least, knows what McDonald's is. Like, as soon as you're two, like, it's in the top 10 first world's words for kids, right? So everybody knows what McDonald's is, but yet they advertise in every magazine, billboard, radio tv movies right they're everywhere everywhere and they have a brand every one of their locations is bright and glowing and you see it why you already know what they are why do they waste all that money in a magazine or a billboard because they need to stay relevant they need to stay relevant you have to stay out there so if you take all that that you're building in your company all your advertising your eddm your everybody sees your logos in your trucks and they go blah 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 that's growth. That's just staying relevant in people's eyes. They know that. Even people who aren't hiring you right now have seen your trucks a bunch. When they go, man, my windows are dirty. What were those guys again we saw? Oh, yeah, X, Y, Z. We gotta, we're going to hire those guys. 
because I saw you. You're relevant. You were relevant when you needed to be relevant. And if you kill all that because you don't have the infrastructure itself to grow, then you're shooting yourself in the foot, right? Like, we want to grow. Even a company, like I said, that's, that's full, you need to grow and just become healthier, better accounts. Drop those crappy accounts and get better accounts, you know? If you are like, I don't really want to get any bigger, when people do call, don't tell them, no, we can't do that. Tell them, okay, well, you know, you're in your head, think, okay, well, we charge 10 bucks a window. I'm going to bid them at 15 If they say yes, guess what? That's an awesome customer. They're more expensive than any of your other customers. Of course you're going to make room for them. Drop that guy you bid a long time ago. You screwed up the bid, right? Just say, hey, I'm sorry. You know, we're going through some restructuring. We have to charge you more, and I understand if you don't go. If you say, we have to charge you this amount, and it's $15 as compared to the $8 they were paying, and they go, okay, no problem. I understand. Well, then you got, you're building health, right? You're still growing as a business. But the dollar amount, the bottom line, the, the, the net is what people don't really focus on. The net you grow that, that's growth, even if you don't do another extra job. Even if you don't get a new customer in an entire year. But in that year, your net goes up 20%. Man, you've done it. That like That's the best kind of growth. But anyway, having to grow, you have to have the infrastructure. The other thing that you need for growth is a plan. Yes, yeah, sometimes with growth, it just happens and it's amazing. And, and you're like, dude, I just had the greatest week ever. My stuff that I've been working on is actually working, you know, like all the ads and the things and this, and I'm on a listserv and I'm on Nextdoor and, and all this stuff is great. And I use Home Advisor, maybe. Yeah, you guys can fight about that. Um, but um, whatever it is, if it's working, awesome. But you didn't plan for it, it just happened. Last week we did an episode on um, basically it's called Who Do You Think You Are? And it was a little bit clickbaity, which I apologize for, right? But what it was was, who are you? What are you? What's your USP? And we, I said, comment on YouTube. Go back there if you're listening to this one too. Just go to YouTube. Search WCR Nation. It's episode. Just search uh, who do you think you are. WCR Nation, who do you think you are? I can't remember the number. And comment down below. But look at the comments. Almost everybody that commented does not know what their USP is. They don't know why anybody should choose them. Like they got kind of ideas uh, one guy uh, said that uh, uh, he doesn't uh, he doesn't need one. I think there's a couple of those maybe in there. And I'm not gunning on any of you guys. This is your business can't be wrong. But that's amazing to me. I didn't know that. I didn't know that there were so many people out there who didn't focus on the why of people hiring them. It's the same reason in growth. If you don't know why you've gotten growth, then how do you replicate it? You don't just go, oh, I'll, I, I, I did uh, Facebook ads and uh, Google ads and uh, newspaper ad and I had uh, placemats done and I was on a golf scorecard, which by the way, side note, don't ever, 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 ever do a golf uh, scorecard ever, ever. No one is playing golf like, well, look at that. I'm going to look at all these ads. No, they're pissed that they missed the last one and their buddy's beating them. That's what they're doing. They're smoking a cigar and waiting for the cheeseburger at the ninth hole. Don't do golf, right? Um, but um, uh, whatever you did, you go, well, that's what worked. I'm going to do it again. How do you know what part of that worked? Of course, all of it didn't work. If you got a golf card uh, scorecard ad, that one obviously didn't work. Obviously didn't work. So now you're spending a bunch of money on stuff you don't know. So you got to focus in on that. But understanding the plan and planning for the growth. Okay, this month we're doing this. Next week we're doing this. But then the next week after that, the next two weeks we're doing this. Seeing where those growth pockets come in, asking people where are they finding you, you're understanding your growth. A lot of times in business, people start businesses because they love to clean windows or they were a window cleaner and they're like, I know how to do that. Let's do it. That's the whole premise of like cooks buying a, a restaurant when it goes under, right? Well, they don't know the business side of it, but you're here, you're listening, you're watching, you care, you give two dumps about your business, so obviously you're going to do freaking awesome. But there's a lot of people who come in that way. The other side of it is people who really like the business side of it and went, huh, window cleaning, huh? I could do that, right? That was the side note. But business is so much more important than what you do with it. You could do the same business, same structure, same, 
you know, you could do the same thing if you were a dog poop picker upper. You really could. Um, but you chose window cleaning, which is cool. Uh, we love window cleaning in general. It's just such a great industry to be in. But understanding it, understanding your business, those are the guys. The Chris Lamborghinis. The Brian, uh, Brandon Vaughn. The Josh Latimers, those guys who now are in limelight because of the growth they had. There's a lot of other guys. Don't, don't, I'm not trying to throw you out. Those are just some cliche names, right? But those guys got there because they understood their growth. They planned their growth. They did uh, marketing calendars, right? They did all that so they knew this works. I'm going to re replicate this. If you had a room and there was a hundred different uh, scanners, and you put a $100 bill on those scanners, and one of those ones made absolutely the exact same copy of a $100 bill, and you could just keep putting it in and hitting it as many copies as you want. You're not just going to keep hitting it on all of them because a lot of $100 bills are just going to be, like, worthless, right? you got to find where your money is. Now, don't go in there. That was the worst analogy I've ever... That was bad. That was bad. Anyway, that was worse than uh, it'll make a turd. That was... Uh... An analogy. Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Find what it is that does it and then replicate that. But if you don't plan for that growth, then you don't know what piece it was that actually worked. If you're just doing everything and you're just throwing crap at the wall and going, ah, something's going to stick, you're doing it wrong. But it's your business, so I guess you can't do it wrong. But you got to plan for your growth. You plan for it. You're planning for what has to be needed. And you plan for how it's gotten. And yes, there's luck in business. Huge luck in business. Sometimes things land and you're like, I, I, I don't even know. And it was perfect timing. And we talked about that. I've had counts where uh, we were just talking about how we hate the window cleaner. Here's 27 buildings. Like, okay. You know? So luck is it. But you have to still plan for the growth itself. Being able to move finances to grow is another big one. Where we kind of talked about having to pay for everything. But you have to float that. You have to have a nest egg of money that you are okay with losing because you'll eventually get it back but if you're spending it now to grow and winter comes you're not going to have that you may not have it right away but you need to have that if you don't have the money to grow to get the truck to get the insurance to get the everything and the plan to make it all happen it's time to not focus on your growth because growing too fast is too bad uh, i'll go back to the example i told you before uh we grew um we picked up an account and um, this account was huge. It was a very, very large account, which at the time uh, was almost, it was like 75% of our entire company at the time. And we got this account, picked it up on a random phone call, literally. And this account was so big, we had to scramble like crazy to try to make it happen I mean, it was, it, we grew too fast. It was sloppy in the beginning. And the problem was, is we learned everything on the get go. Everything was so sloppy and it wasn't planned. And it was so far out that we, we didn't do it properly in the beginning. Now, we eventually made it happen and we made it work. Um, but I also had the finances at the time to float uh, a ton of new equipment, ton of new equipment. It was, I mean, the equipment side of things was uh, like $14,000 uh, by uh, six days later when we were supposed to start. I mean, it's one of those deals, right? So being able to kind of be prepared for that kind of growth is what you need to do. If, if I didn't have those assets, if I couldn't get a loan or I couldn't do something in those times, I would have lost it. I would have lost it or tried to do a crappy, would have done so poorly that I got bad ratings and then my, my name that I've worked on is tarnished because of that. And that's growing too fast. You can grow too fast. It's bad. I know a guy who, um, uh, this is now probably five, well, maybe maybe even a little more than that, seven years ago. And uh, super cool kid. Um, you know, he just was ultra, this, I just picked up this. I just did this. I just did this. I just did that. And he literally within first year was doing, I mean, phenomenal. He would have been one of these regular names. But what happened was, is he had his staff that he picked were all new. He was new. Everything was new. One guy left, which compromised everything else. 
the second guy left. Like he had three or four people and himself the first year. That's how well he was doing. But one person left, it screwed the whole thing up. Everybody else was unhappy and they all left. Every single one of them left. And he was left with uh, a scramble of all this stuff, all this work that he couldn't do. And it was so much of a burden that I'm, I, he just closed down. I don't know if he sold everything off or what, but it was, it was this, it was a firecracker. It was like if you take a fuse out of a firecracker and light it, it goes crazy and then burns out. And that's what you can do in growth. If you don't do it right, everybody should go out there and grow, like I said. But you got to do it right. Otherwise, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Um, talk Bobby Walker. Bobby Walker is doing it right. That's an uh, entrepreneur, uh, journey of an entrepreneur. Uh, super good dude. Like I said, awesome podcast. But he's one of those guys that just understands the structure. He understands the foundation for the house. You want to build a six, seven story building, you got to build the structure to support the six or seven story building. If you build a support, the foundation, right? You build that for a three story. And then two years later, you're like, mm, I want to do a seven story. You can't. The foundation was laid for a three story, right? You need to continually update it and prepare for the growth. You can't just slap some stuff on hope it works. And then you're just SOL after that. So, but anyway, go out there and grow. Do it. Uh, I had a great time uh, in New York. Uh, went over a lot of stuff. Uh, look for some big things coming from WCR, too, uh, as far as um, uh, uh, website changes and things like that. It's uh, pretty exciting. But I also want to give a big shout-out to all of my uh, customers, my clients, if you will, that I am your rep. You guys call me. I get calls all the time like, hey, I'm ready. Let's do this. Put any orders in. Uh, truly, uh, that is amazing. That's where I make my money is putting in orders. So, I mean, that is super, super cool of you guys that do that. Uh, and I genuinely, genuinely appreciate it. Um, and if you want to be that person, if you want to be one of the cool kids, um, my number is 862 312 2026. And if you call an order from me and you tell me, uh, let's see, what should this week's be? Uh, let's just do uh, growth. I have a growth. Yeah, that's what we're going to say. <laughs> this week's code is I have a growth. If you tell me that, <laughs> you're going to get 5% off of your order that you put in through me. So, uh, yeah, I really hope people call it that one. That's going to be good. But uh, usually it's a, a code. Every week I kind of sneak this in. So, you people who are still listening, uh, you've heard it. The others who have uh, decided that um, I'm not worth listening to have already left and they're not going to know it. So go ahead. Let me know. Give me a call. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, don't grow too fast. Go check out Bobby Walker's uh, podcast. Uh, go check out all the names that I said. Download Window Cleaning Marketing Blueprints. It is a free book on WCR. It's amazing. It really, really is amazing. Actually, Bobby used that to start this. But anyway. Um, and uh, until next week, go out there and be epic.